Evening everybody. Welcome to Zwift. Welcome to Zwift Community Live. Group running. Bear with me. I've got to sort out what I'm doing. <laughs> it's a progressive run today. So what that means is that we're running at a certain pace at the beginning and as the run progresses we gradually increase speed. That's me there in the white with the sunglasses looking very cool indeed. to slow down a bit I think or do I need to speed up need to speed up so what we have today are three groups there's an, an A and B group kind of running together and a C group and a D group all at different paces and I'm supposed to be with the A and B group as usual with me I seem to have started slowly. Oh well. I'll get up to speed in a second. Catch everybody up. I think I'm supposed to be starting at around about 11 kilometers an hour. Just a bit faster. So I need to catch some people up now. Just making sure the stream works all right. Guys, if you are watching and you want to just message me on Facebook chat, I am watching Facebook chat. So let's settle down a bit and I'll tell you a bit more about what we're doing. You see that yellow beam shining up as though it's a, an alien spacecraft about to take us up. That's the race leader, the, the, the run leader. It's not a race, it's a training run, a group workout like you have in cycling. And uh, the run leader has a yellow beacon so we can all spot where he is, so we can stay with him if we need to. So I'm having to, to play a bit of catch up. If you're a regular on Zwift, you'll know what's going on. We're on the London course today. It's a group run, three categories A, B, C and D, A and B are running together. Top left you can see my heart rate, 151 beats per minute at the moment and my cadence is 170. Just below that you can see kilometre splits, so we haven't done one kilometre yet, but you'll see those rack up. And on the right, the names of everyone taking part. If you've never seen Zwift before, there's some explaining to do. I'm on a treadmill in my shed in the back garden. <laughs> I'm not on the streets of London, but I'm also significantly not sitting in my bedroom with a game controller. Zwift is a game, it's an online cycling and now running game where you earn experience points just like other computer games and you're playing in real time against real people across the world. You see the flags of the countries there on the right, Norway, Germany, Canada, the UK, USA.
heart rate's gone up a bit because I'm trying to catch up. See the main group up there, the pink shirts, two pink shirts and the beacon, that's who I'm trying to catch up to. So you'll see when I hit one kilometer, I get some points. There's 10 experience points for running one kilometer. But what you will notice is I'm on level 10 and normally there'd be an orange bar creeping up that gray line there as I increase my points. But running is in its very early stages on Zwift and as yet there are only 10 levels so I can't get any higher at the moment. If you've got any questions I'm looking at Facebook chat do ask something do say hi if you're new to Zwift certainly please ask very common questions are what treadmill are you using and how do I get to run on Zwift? Right, there's our race leader. So I'll slow down. I keep saying the word race, don't I? Run, leader. My name's Stephen. I've been running on Zwift for a year since the very first, the very first incarnation of running as a kind of alpha, alpha, alpha program a year ago, over a year ago now. And I've been cycling on Zwift for three years. So Zwift is just over three years old. I started February, 2015 I think it went online as a beta Zwift in about November 2014 <laughs> one of the uh, one of the regulars on Zwift just said have you read the race instructions <laughs> because last time <laughs> I uh, we did a group run it was a, a basic set of instructions that you had to follow for this group run. Did I read them? No, I didn't. Did I mess it all up? Yes, I did. We were supposed to do, you know, an interval of 15 kilometers an hour, then an interval of 17 kilometers an hour, then back down to 15. Well, I just messed all that up. I had no idea what I was supposed to be running or when. And the idea, of today's run specifically is that we run increasing our pace by 0.1 of a kilometer an hour every 500 meters well I've already totally messed that up because I started late I've had to catch everyone up so now I, I don't know I don't know what speed I'm supposed to be going so basically, I'll just stick with Tim, the race leader, the run leader, and, uh, and just gradually increase the pace. So Tim's right behind me. Tim's an experienced runner, track runner. I'm more of a, an ultra runner, um, marathon runner. I tend to run trails. I'm, I don't really do the track very often. Speed is not necessarily my strong point. I'm certainly not elite by any means. So if you look on the uh, right hand side of the Zwift screen you can see that Tim Gross with the beacon he's running at about just over five minutes per kilometer I'm catching up again 
at 4.58 per kilometer. How does Zwift know that I'm running the pace I'm running? There's lots of different ways. And honestly, if you go on the Facebook forum, Zwift Runners, there's constant questions about what's the most accurate way to uh, get your pace correct on Zwift. Truth of it is, there's no completely accurate way. There's always going to be a pitfall somewhere, whether it's your style of running, whether it's the inaccuracies of certain pieces of equipment that you've got. See, I don't trust my treadmill at all. I would never take my pace from my treadmill. I kind of trust my watch because that's been calibrated outside in the real world, doing real runs. Thanks for the ride on Johnny. But you wear a foot pod. So you can buy a foot pod on Amazon from as little as about 25 pounds for something called the Milestone Bluetooth foot pod. And it ranges right up to what most people regard as the, the best foot pod for running on Zwift which is the Stride, S-T-R-Y-D. And that retails somewhere in the region of $200, maybe 150 quid, 150 UK pounds, something like that. Um, suffice to say, my wife won't let me have one. So I've got the Garmin footpod. And Garmin footpod broadcasts using a system called Ant Plus, A-N-T Plus. So I'm using a computer, a PC. You can also use a Mac. And you get a little USB stick. If you're a cyclist, it's the same thing. You plug your USB stick in and you connect your device. If you've never seen Zwift before, your foot pod connects wirelessly so the little USB stick that you plug into your computer and then Zwift is an app that sits on your computer and when you load it up it finds that signal and it can interpret your pace, your speed, your cadence from that. You can also buy a different kind of foot pod called a Bluetooth foot pod. So the Stride, the Milestone, Polar Stride Sensor, all broadcasting Bluetooth Smart. And, uh... oh, right, There's Tim's saying we're going at 12 now. So let's go up a bit. It's 12 kilometers an hour. So you can see I'm at 11.8, 11.9. But let's, I'm just gonna stick with Tim. So the Bluetooth foot pods can broadcast a wireless signal to your iOS device. So if you've got an iPhone or an iPad, iPod, touch, whatever, then you can broadcast to that. And Zwift is also available as an iPhone app. So if you don't have a big TV screen or a a powerful computer that you can use. You can just use your phone. And more recently, you can now run on Zwift using Apple TV, which is a really kind of cheap, good way of getting into Zwift. Because it's not that expensive. If you get the, well, you have to get the new Apple TV 4K, to get the best experience. But it, you know, it's relative to everything else, relatively cheap. You, you know, it's better than getting a, a thousand pound computer. Zwift will run on the relatively modest computer, but to get the full effect, it's good to have a good graphics card, powerful CPU, because this game is 
rather graphic intensive. So there's the beacon. So we're sticking with Tim, gradually increasing the pace. We have eight kilometers in total to do. So you can see up there in the middle, five kilometers left just over. 121, I'm not going at 121 kilometers an hour, Tim. I think that might be a miss, mistype. Oh no, it's not, 12.1. Yes, you see, Tim knows what he's doing. He just missed the decimal point out. So it's so good to see quite a few runners out on course today. Swift running is growing all the time. And honestly, so many of you I know hate running on the treadmill. It's such a boring, dull thing to do. But there are lots of reasons why it's good to do treadmill running occasionally. It does teach you a bit of discipline, a bit of pace discipline. It teaches you to get in the zone. You can learn, say you run at 10 kilometers an hour for one hour, your brain will soon learn what running at 10 kilometers an hour feels like. So when you get outside in the real world, you'll be able to tell how hard you're working around about what pace you're going without even looking at your watch. Keeping the heart rate relatively stable. So see on the left there, I've spent 17 minutes in zone three. So that's tempo zone. The orange zone is threshold zone and red zone is anaerobic zone where you're really working hard. Very, very hard. Steps per minute is not really optimal. You need to be about 180 really to be very efficient in your running. So, hi Nathan, Nathan says hi, good job. <laughs> Rich says he uses phone and it works great. Absolutely. I mean, if that's all you've got, your phone will work fantastically for Zwift running. My only point about using Zwift with a phone is, I think for me, the, the great thing about Zwift is immersing yourself in the environment. You know, look at these graphics, superb. And if you find treadmill running boring, to be able to immerse yourself in the graphics and in a new world is fantastic. And I think you can't really do that so well on a phone because it's, the screen is so small. I've got a 37 inch TV screen in front of me. So it's really filling up my, my uh, eye space. So to some degree, I can kind of put myself in the zone And it, you know, part of me forgets that I'm running on the treadmill. I also forget I'm running on the treadmill because I'm chatting to you lot. <laughs> uh, Ashley says he's never seen a group run before. You should get on it. Get on it, Ashley. If you don't have a treadmill at home, most gyms these days are well equipped with Wi-Fi. Take your iPad along, take your phone along, get connected up. You can run on the gym. In fact, our run leader, Tim, he's at a gym right now. He hasn't got a treadmill at home. And you don't need a special treadmill. And a lot of people talk about, oh, I've got to buy a 4,000 pound Bluetooth connected treadmill. Well, you don't. My treadmill 
was 200 pounds second hand but it goes up to 20 kilometers an hour i don't need it to broadcast any information to zwift because i'm wearing my foot pod and my heart rate monitor so essentially all i need is something that turns over a belt at the bottom of the shed a lot of people say well what they want is integration with Zwift. Thanks Dave Davidson. Um, so that when you go up a hill in Zwift, the incline increases on your treadmill. And that's all well and good. And you know what, that probably will happen at some point. But for the moment, if you wanna just get started on Zwift and get going, you do not need to spend a crap ton of money, honestly, on the treadmill. Spend forty pounds, sixty dollars, on it on a, a foot pod. Get your phone. You're away. You don't even need a heart rate monitor. I like to wear a heart rate monitor because it, it gives me an idea when I'm training of how hard I'm working. Um, you know that if you're in the orange zone, if you're in the red zone, you're really giving your heart a good workout which means you're gonna have a good training effect from your run. Running at a pace like this, I'm maintaining my fitness, keeping my level up there, but I'm not gonna tear many muscle fibers to rebuild them to get particularly stronger. Thanks, Steve. A few of the Zwift team online. I know that Johnny Nobler is running at the back of the group as well. I think he's taking the, the D group. Eric Min, boss of Zwift, was riding, was running on Zwift the other day with us. Great to see him involved. That's the other great thing about Zwift, you know. Um, not many companies would you find the founder of the company, the CEO of the company, engaging so, so thoughtfully, so regularly, so enthusiastically with, um, with the customers, essentially the people who are paying to use his service. And, it's credit to him that he, he even gets in on the forums. He's, he's there on the Zwift Runners Forum, the Zwift Riders Forum on Facebook, always offering advice, helping out where he can. So that's great to see. And it's one of the things that keeps me using Zwift. It's the fact that I feel like I'm with a company that cares about the people who use their product. Thanks for the ride on Wienerman. If you're new to Zwift, you're wondering what that is. So like on Strava, where you give kudos to people, you can watch Zwift, you can click on somebody's name and you can give them a thumbs up. It's called a ride on. And that's another thing that makes Zwift so appealing is the community aspect of the whole thing. From the way the, the staff at the company interact with us to the way all the runners and riders interact on Facebook and run with each other and cycle with each other, help each other through training sessions, give each other encouragement in races and compete against each other. Am I falling behind a bit again because I'm yakking too much? 12.5, I think he's saying now. Yeah. Need to pay attention. It's difficult to do two things at once. I'm trying to talk to you and give you useful tidbits, but I'm also supposed to be taking part essentially in a training session. <laughs> 
So, look, heart rate's creeping up now. Probably because I'm talking a lot. But, you know, the more you run, the further you run, you are working harder. Johnny's just said his, his group has finished, three kilometers done. Well done, Dee group. <laughs> I didn't mean that in a rude way, back of the pack, Johnny. <laughs> I think if you and I were to cycle together, I think I know we'd be in the lead and it wouldn't be me. Do you know what? Since Zwift running started, my cycling has just taken a nosedive. I used to be on the bike really quite regularly, even though I'm mainly a runner, I am a runner. Um, I used to quite enjoy getting on the bike two or three times a week, racing on Zwift. Um, and you know, I do still want to do it, but I've been doing a lot of outdoor races recently. I've been concentrating a lot more on running and less on triathlon, which I had a bit of a delve into a couple of years ago. I haven't done any triathlons in the last 12 months. So running's really taken the front seat again, really. So here we are in Trafalgar Square. I've caught back up with Tim again. London is one of three courses that you can run and ride on in Zwift. London obviously is a real world course. And you've got Richmond, USA, which is also a real world course based on the 2015 World Championship cycling course. But where Zwift excels, where we all love to go, is the fictional island of Watopia. Again, if you've never seen Zwift, this all looks great, doesn't it? But you wait till you get onto Watopia and you see the waterfalls, you see the volcano, you see the underwater tunnels that you can run through. You see the Mayan ruins, amazing. It's expanding all the time. Well, indeed, London has expanded recently with a new, a new hill to climb. But Watopia is where Zwift has its playground, where the engineers and the programmers can make up stuff that you just can't get in real life. So Rich was saying that he uses his phone, but he's also said that he projects his phone onto a big TV screen, which is another way to do it, either with a cable or through Apple TV, you can connect your phone and kind of stream it, not, what is it, Chromecast it or whatever, to, uh, to a big screen. So that's another way to get your Zwift experience large. If you've been dipping in and out, welcome along, this is Zwift. This is Zwift Community Live. If you've not been to Zwift Community Live before, hi. This is where you will find live racing, live running, live cycling, predominantly cycling because Zwift running has not really taken off as yet. It's not even in, in its beta phase. So if you're watching this now, you're, you're new to the party. You're an early adopter. But cycling's been around for a while. And if you go into Zwift Community Live, you will almost always find commentary, live footage of racing taking place. We've got our regular commentator, Nathan. He's been commentating on Zwift for years now. To the neglect of his own cycling, I'm sure. <laughs> 
but he's a vital part of Zwift Community Live. Great resource, great fun to watch. So have a look at some races on Zwift, cycling and running. I know there's a lot of information to take in, but actually it's a relatively short run recently, really only two kilometers to go. And we are gradually increasing the pace, although I seem to have gone off out the front now. Where's our beacon? Yeah, there he is, not too far behind. I'll slow down a bit for him. My name's Stephen Cousins, and uh, I do think I do something called Film My Run. If you go and have a look at filmmyrun.com, or if you uh, look up Film My Run on YouTube, and you'll find videos of real world races, mostly marathons and ultras, some 10Ks and half marathons. Race directors asked me to go out and film their their race for them. So I take my GoPro along and I edit together a six to 10 minute film of their race. So if you're interested in trail racing, ultra running, marathon running on in the UK, do go and have a look at Film My Run YouTube page. You might be wondering about the camera angles. Normally, when you're running on Zwift, the camera just stays behind you and, and kind of follows you as you run. Um, but if you press uh, the number keys on your keyboard, you can change the camera angle. Um, so that's a handy way to get different angles of view to your run makes things a bit more interesting. Um, but recently, Zwift also implemented a new feature called uh, drone footage. And it simulates uh, a drone flying around you like that. I need to slow down a bit more, don't I? It's Tim's miles behind. Um, Yeah, so it can make your viewing experience a bit more interesting. But you can see I'm not actually touching the keys. All I've done is I've just created a little program which automatically presses the keys for me. Nothing special, just makes it look a bit more interesting. I have to say, in terms of a training session, again, yet again, I've completely failed to follow any instructions. <laughs> I've just basically talked for half an hour, haven't I? I should just shut up and pay attention to what I'm supposed to be doing. Look, Tim's miles ahead of me now. There he is, look. So if you're interested in running on Zwift, if you're interested in group running, download the Zwift mobile link. It's a, it, there's two kind of apps you can get on your phone. One is the main Zwift app, and there's another app called the Zwift mobile link. And on there, you can click a little tab called events, and it'll show you what the next runs are that are taking place on Zwift, the next group runs. You can either join in a group run, or you can simply log into Zwift and run on your own and enjoy the run, enjoy the scenery, take it at your own pace. Oh, well, maybe Tim disappeared then because John Hancock is just ahead of me. He said, welcome back, Tim. So maybe Tim had a technical issue. Anyway, one kilometer to go now. Heart rate is nicely 
back in the yellow zone where we want to be. Oh yeah, Tim says he's had a dropout look. 35 minutes of running, nice easy pace. So we're running back along towards Buckingham Palace now. I wish we might just get there before the end of the run. Not sure. There's Marble Arch. You see there, the left-hand side kilometre splits. So. I suppose we have gone a little bit faster each kilometre, just about. Five minutes, bar 4.59, 4.58, 4.53, 4.43. four fifty nine because we slowed down to find Tim again. So I didn't realise he'd had a dropout. So he's now miles ahead of me. So let's speed up just for the last little bit. Have a bit of effort. Try and catch them up. They are going to have a go at me, you know, for not sticking to the rules yet again. Water off a duck's back. Six hundred meters or so to go. You can um, get achievement awards on Zwift for going certain distances. So, for example, when you run ten k for the first time, you get an achievement award. If you run a half marathon on Zwift, you get an achievement. And you win virtual prizes, like in any other computer game. I have yet, well, I have run a marathon on Zwift, but it was a long time ago when there were no achievement awards at the very start of Zwift running. I also attempted to run a marathon on Zwift. <laughs> um, a couple of a few months ago, a couple of months ago, and it's really frustrating because I fiddled with some keys on my keyboard at 41 kilometers. That's about 25 and a half miles, and my computer crashed. <laughs> so although I kind of did run a marathon on the treadmill because I did finish it off, I didn't get my Zwift achievement award. So at some point in the not too distant future, I am going to try again to run a marathon on Zwift. 200 meters to go. Let's catch them up, look. There we are, look there they are. Zwift regulars, Tim Gross, John Hancock. John organises a lot of runs on Zwift as well. And there we go, eight kilometres finished. So we'll just slow down. See, really, we should have a, a cool down kilometre now. I think Tim is going on for a bit of a cool down. But guys, that is Zwift running. Eight kilometres, gradually progressive. I think we just about managed a progressive. Kilometre seven, 
was a bit hit and miss. But I blame Tim for that, having to drop out. You see the text there, great run all. You can press M on your computer keyboard, type a message, it'll go to the whole group. If you want to see results of races on Zwift, then um, go to zwiftpower.com. Not affiliated to Zwift, but very much integrated with Zwift. Um, cycling races, running races, all the results you will find on zwiftpower.com. So let's stop. I'll just show you what happens at the end of a run. We'll get menu come up, hopefully. There we go, you click menu and you click end run and that's it. Shows you little routes that you've run and you click OK and it saves to, to Strava. Thanks very much guys. Join Zwift, get running on Zwift. See you next time. Take care.